It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. These conditions would be very, very nice in SoCal. We have a really good, fun party. We got the Hulk, we got Jim Bowie, we got Kevin Van Darn, we got uh, Big Rich, we got L Train, uh, some really good fishermen in this crew. And then just as kind of like a general philosophy, you know, if you're going to a new spot and you want to catch fish, a couple of things are really important. Okay, the first thing is you have to have a fish TV, right? Let's be real, let's be honest. And then beyond that, I kind of think you have to be willing to be bold and adventurous and just go to places where people generally don't want to go, whether it be by distance, effort, risk, etc. And um, again, you know, when you have a good team, you know, everyone's on the same page, everyone understands the game plan. So we're going to bust some ass, put your hard hats on, let's go see about some fish, huh? Hey, what is going on everyone? Coming at you to chronicle a trip we did recently to the Central Coast. Now, if you follow my channel, you'll know that I try to deliver as much action sequence footage as possible. But at the same time, a lot of it is, what do you want to call it, like classroom lecture material where I try to relay information that you might find useful when you go out. Now, my primary concern is for your safety. I don't want someone who is maybe new to the sport to look at one of my videos and think, oh, well that looks pretty straightforward and that looks like fun. Let me go try that. So let me make this crystal clear. The Central Coast is not for newbies. The oceanic conditions on this particular trip were a complete anomaly. This is not typically the Central Coast. The Central Coast is typically more like this. Here we go. We got Cheeto on a big fish. More likely than not, you're going to face big wind, big swells, and maybe even a shark. So I believe when scouting out a new area, a good pregame plan is critical. And I think Google Earth is a great place to start. Now I'm not saying that Google Earth is going to enable you to hit the jackpot every time or find Al Capone's hidden treasure. But I do think its real benefit is that it keeps you from wasting time in unproductive areas. So for example, along the central coast, I think that everything or just about everything is structure oriented. So then I'm going to focus my fishing efforts on stuff like kelp beds or stuff like this, uneven underwater terrain. And I'm not going to waste a lot of time fishing in the desert areas like here. And as I mentioned in the past, generally speaking, if you want to crack at the bigger fish, you're going to have to go to places where most people don't want to go. And I'm going to guess that's about the three mile mark. So some of these waypoints that we dropped were probably about five miles offshore. And then from there, it's really all about keeping one eye on your fish TV and then looking for anything interesting that comes across the screen. And so the rest of the footage is basically an electronic diary of what we saw. So this is a mark. Okay, those are fish. But on the Garmin unit, if you don't see a lot of red, it typically means that they're smaller fish. And a mark like that, it may be interesting on a lake, you know, maybe even local, or down the beach. But at the Central Coast, we're not wasting time with marks like that. We're looking for much better stuff. Big school of blue. Thick here, they're everywhere. So this is where we're gonna pick up some uh, fish fry fodder. Let's see if we can film one from top to bottom. I'm just gonna drop it down here. This shouldn't take long. Okay, so I'm basically, if it just stops falling for no good reason, like there, I'm gonna swing. Like there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Just, yeah. I mean, patience is typically a virtue, but you don't need patience here. Okay, so, um, You got little guys, you got big guys, and um, 
please be careful when you grab your lure. You probably should not do this, but if you're gonna grab your lure, grab it high so you don't get stuck with a treble. I'm gonna try and be a little more selective. So I'm putting a like a four ounce cold sniper down there. Hopefully get past some of the smaller fish. Boom. Oh, okay, so that got stopped by a fish. I want to be a little bit careful because I don't want to lose this lure. So this feels like a better one. And so we're a little bit spoiled so we can afford to let the, you know, one pounders go, only keep the bigger fish. So this is not a this is not a bad one, but we're gonna let this guy go. It's a little blue. And this is where things get interesting. We run into a bait ball that was absolutely remarkable. Probably the biggest and most dense bait ball I've ever seen. So check out this scene from my fish finder. I am paddling in about 130 feet of water, but this bait ball is so expansive and so dense, my fish finder thinks it is the ocean floor. And so it's reading nine feet of water. Okay, so at some point we run into this scene on the fish TV and um, let me apologize about the glare and the salt water spots. Now, these saltwater spots are not from the Pacific Ocean. These are coming off my brow. Your daddy worked hard. And so we have a bait ball, and bait typically will kind of represent as an amorphous cloud, okay? So this bait ball was basically spanning anywhere from 10 foot all the way basically down to the bottom, okay? So you got some bait here. But look at these guys. Look at these individual squigglies, okay? This is not bait. These are predatory fish that are just having a field day. I mean, someone has rung the dinner bell. And then you had more clues up top. It turned into a block party. You had sea lions, you had kayak fishermen, you had finback whales, you had pelicans, you had seagulls. The military were called in. You had these guys. And even the ground squirrels got into the act. With that many clues, you have to try at least one drop. Fish. Oh, look at this. Yeah, better fish. And <laughs> I don't think it was one fish. I don't think this is the same fish coming back for seconds. This is something else. This isn't huge, but it's a better fish for sure. Mark it. Oh, this is a nice fish. Yeah, we'd be fools not to drop down. And the results were predictable. I mean, you're a good distance offshore. You got sea lions, birds, whales, etc. Wow! I mean, like, of course it makes sense to drop down on a big bait ball like that. This bait ball is absolutely enormous. At this point, things get chaotic. I probably would have needed three, four cameras to capture all of the action footage. Link cods start coming up, more big reds, other rockfish. It was basically just wide open for about 30 minutes. Oh, look at that. Nice red. Oh no! Oh no! Well, he's floating. He's a floater. Yeah, we got that guy. Okay, here's the man, Hulk. Yeah, this this spot is absolutely rocking. Look at look at the sea lions going after El Train's fish. Look at Hulk going after a biggin. And look how heavy that rod is. My guess is this is a, a pretty good fish. Look at, oh, wow. Look at this monster. 
And the thing with the Hulk is he's a big dude, so he, he makes these fish look a little bit smaller, but that is a big red. Big red. Out of you, man. Out of you. We got a big ridge on a fish. This is what I was talking about. Like, we took a chance and we're way offshore. And you just gotta go where people, most people don't wanna go. You can take some risk. Sometimes you get rewarded. Oh, look at, oh my goodness. Two monster reds. Wow. Oh man. This is, this is not as big as the other one, but. Yeah, we're right on top of a massive, massive bait ball. Look at the sea lions, right? They know. Let me give you the other... Uh... So, yeah, so I'm, I'm going right down to the bottom. And as soon as it touches down, I'm super careful to pick it up right away. This one's not it. Oh my goodness. This one's as big as the other one. Look at this. Wow. Hold on. Shoot. I'm sorry, man. I don't have to circle him. Nice red. Oh, well, that's a starry, I think. Yeah, it's a starry. Yeah, starry. Pretty fish. And so after the bait ball bonanza party, we come back in toward the kelp bed to try to catch the fish that would complete the trifecta. So the trifecta being lingcod, big red, and a cabazon. Oh, we got a better fish on here. In about 70 feet of water. So this is the Head shakes or whatever you want to call them are not high frequency, which tells me it's not a blue rockfish at least. Some kind of a better fish. Small ling maybe. Big cavy maybe. What is this? Oh! Big cavy. Trifecta. Big red, ling, and now, oh! Now a big cavy. Out of us. Okay, that's gonna wrap up this video. As always, thank you for dropping by and sharing our experience. I'm gonna leave you with some footage from a beautiful sunset, and I hope to see you all soon. Bye for now.